episode of Speakers of Heidelin is made possible by our generous patrons. Special thanks to our supreme and master speakers Omeji Cat Comet, Erisu Yamakawa, Circuit Barakil, Alex Franco AV, Winebow Brood, Psyche, Asuta Starbreeze, Cletus Oreo, Nina Grimstotter, Nat Clay, Lily Black, Bob Cece, Mikta Rabentau, Sampa Chakwatol, Edwin, Arcadia Lunashine, Umbral Wind, Quick Levin, Pamela Isley, Camille Grino, Elenriel Maximus, Coderith Novelis, Mira Miri, Bay Barbele, Suno Shikano, Celesta Natrell, Lazy Boy, A Bag of Dragon Knight, Luke Osborne, Pandalu Storm Arrow, Tex, Kyle Lynn, AJ Brainswordson, Anathus Moonscar, Arthur Law, Beridan Derard, Cypup, Spencer Christmas, Noy Fafnir, Chesha Saltiri, Celine Deloon, and Webster Wolf. Support the show and become a patron today at patreon.com slash speakersxiv. Thank you. This is Speakers of Violence. Good evening, Aorcians. Welcome to Speakers of Fidelin, episode 308. I'm Lakeel Bravestone, and I'm joined today by Georgi Wiston, Mela Vanadar, and Rollo Dez. Hello. Hello, welcome. Hello. It is uh, July 16th, 2022, and today's main topics... Um, we're, we're going back to the backstage investigators. <laughs> uh, you know, you probably don't even know who they are. I say that every time. That's an old joke now. But uh, they literally don't promote them anywhere. So uh, we're doing it. Uh, today, uh, we're reading an interview with the localization team. Um, and uh, we'll also be talking about some upcoming crystalline... Sorry, they've already done it, I think. The crystalline conflict changes. Uh, reward system changes, I should say. Um, also, we're reading Mogmail, speakersexavia.com slash Mogmail. Remember to send us Mogmail. Um, yeah, that's that. Stay tuned for the poster. We'll be answering questions from the Syndicate. That's the show. That's the show. Let's jump into uh, recent events. Right. Let's just start off in recent events. DC data, sorry, DC center, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you can no, no, no. The, I believe in you. The data center travel status. Wait, hmm. The data so center travel, twice. the data center travel system. So they they okay. So I'm 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 reading the headline of the post and it's messing with my head. So we talked about the data center travel system last week and how uh, horrible uh, mm. it was. Um, or not? You mean to not, put status yeah, status gonna, as as the? That's fine. Yeah, uh, we're getting a status <laughs> update on the status <laughs> of DC travel. Data travel stat. Okay, so. I have clearly had the same... I didn't even look at the slide when I fucked up. I was just reading. So the same thing has happened when I made this slide. It just got stuck in my head. A DC for travel status reason, status. Yeah? For some reason, the sentence, data center travel status and opening date of home world transfer service does not process in the keel's brain. No, because <laughs> the real name is DC... No! The d real name is data center travel system, no. and it should say data center travel system status, right? Mm, but it says sure. data center travel status, which uh, it, uh, is wrong in my brain, and I just couldn't get over it when I made the slide, I guess. Uh, okay, anyways, I'll read this, the headline again. Data center travel status and opening date of home world transfer service. It's quite yeah. a mouthful. Um, mm -hmm. it, this was posted on July 14th. It's an update regarding the aforementioned system uh, systems. Uh, so let's read the post. Uh, we would like to inform you about the status of 
data center travel mm -hmm. and the opening date of the temporarily suspended home world transfer service. We have completed the countermeasures against data center travel load with patch 6.18 hotfixes on Wednesday, July 13th, 2022. Since then, we have confirmed that the number of users have been steadily increasing and the system is operating stably without experience a high load. However, as the number of users is expected to increase over the weekend, we will continue monitoring until the end of the week to make sure that the system can continue to operate stably past the weekend. Since the Homeworld Transfer Service uses the same structure as data center travel, we will wait until the end of the week to confirm that there are no issues and resume the service sometime next week. We will announce the opening date as soon as it is determined. We apologize for the inconvenience caused by the long wait and kindly ask customers for their patience. So there yeah, you go. The system's doing well. I like that mm. it's built on the transfer service. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. I like that they're like re <laughs> reappropriating things they already have in the game because mm. yeah. they can't build too much upon all this spaghetti. Mm -hmm. but hey, you know what? Sincerely, it could have been so much worse. Like, you know, it's 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 working. It is working yeah, really fine. well. That's yeah. true. That's true. Oh yeah, they also did, they did say customers. That's a that's an eleven dev thing to say, please. Oh. But, oh, uh, yeah. They've been transferred over to the fourteen team now. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, customer because this is like related to a service that you explicitly need to pay money. I can understand why they're using customers here. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. So there you go. Um, so you, I, I didn't. I guess I I didn't know that the world transfer service was turned off but didn't don't they always do that for like big patches well this wasn't a big patch this was just a 0.18 patch so well i don't think they disabled it originally i think it was something that they disabled when they realized oh it can't handle right. this much yeah yeah just sort of got lost in the sauce um all right uh but there you go uh we'll probably have another follow-up next week when they mm. uh, turn it back on um, so, I can yeah. foresee them disabling one or the other of these two services when it comes to major, like, potentially the next expansion, at least temporarily, because I don't think they'll want to deal with both of these right. at a launch. Oh, true, true. I wouldn't be surprised if they disabled both systems. Yeah. Well, the mm -hmm. home tran I don't know that the home transfer service, I think, usually goes down. But you have to log in first to use that. To use what? The to use the home work. The transfer the, service or the DC travel service? Just the normal one where you go to a different server. Oh, I do think you, they yeah. might. I don't. I think internal data center travel will still exist. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Well, there you go. Um, look forward to the return of the tra the world transfer ser home world transfer I mean, service. <laughs> I know a lot of you're looking out for that one. <laughs> considering how chaotic this has been for the since the launch of the data center travel system. Mm -hmm. Imagine how chaotic it will be if and when they just decide to make it make you able to be transferring between every data center. Oh, God. oh I can't wait for that chaos. It's yeah. going to be so good. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to loiter in every <laughs> European server. You guys can't stop Get me. Get off our server. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right. Uh, the European servers. Cuz I need I need to bring the crystal nightclub scene to mm, chaos. Yeah. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have a nightclub now in our FC house, by the way. Oh, oh. So, are yeah. we doing the winter it's, solstice map? Yeah, the win winter <laughs> The billboard. Mm, we only yeah. want it in a tiny FC chamber, though. We don't. <laughs> yeah, it. it's not the whole house. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, anyways, yeah. There we go. Uh, moving on to the next story. Okay. This one's really interesting because I think this one uh, we didn't. Stupid as heck. <laughs> well, at least it's. Been I fixed. like that this angers Mela. Yeah, this is Mela. Mela's oh, gonna be angry. Baffled for... me. Yeah, it was. I agree, though. It is baffling. Uh, this was an update that was posted to the Lodestone regarding uh, season rewards for Crystalline Conflict. And you know that they've there's been a heated discussion in the forums when the post starts with, Thank you for all your feedback regarding season <laughs> rewards for Crystalline Conflict. Um, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll read it. Uh, After careful consideration, we have decided to change how season rewards are distributed, allowing players to receive portraits, achievements, and titles for all tiers and ranks up to and including their final standing standings at the end of the season. 
And that makes you, you know, you're like, hmm, weird. I thought that was, that's, surely that was how it was intended to be. But they explain. You no longer need to worry about stopping at a particular rank or tier for a reward that catches your eye. Just take to the crystal line and enjoy yourself. So, um, our changes to Framer's Kit rewards. From patch 6.2 onward, using a Framer's Kit reward will grant portrait rewards, uh, rewards commen commensurate with your rank and tier, as well as rewards for all ranks and tiers below your final standing. Changes to achievements and titles. From Season 2 onward, players will receive achievements and titles for all tiers and ranks up to and promoting... Sorry, promoting? Including their final standings at the end of each season. I'm already thinking about the billboard to promote our Winter mm. Solstice mm -hmm. bash. <laughs> uh, please note, uh, the achievements and titles for rank rewards will change each season. But those, uh, but those four tiers will remain the same. The portrait and achievement rewards for all tiers and ranks up to and including the final standings of players in Season 1 are scheduled to be unlocked with the release of Patch 6.2. So you can't do it yet. No. Can you believe this? <clears throat> Very so their initial weird system. <laughs> their initial vision for this was that let's say you did really well this season. Yeah. And you got to the like you got to crystal rank, whatever the last one is. Yeah. And you got that really cool portrait or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then next season you can only go up to platinum because you you still need to collect that one. And eventually you have them to like hang around in bronze. Because yeah. you still not got the bronze portrait. Yeah, you have right. to derank. Could you imagine having an incentive to derank so you can get <laughs> like the portrait yeah. you want? Yeah, oh, I'm too good I, at this game, and it keeps starting me in gold. <laughs> I wild. Yeah. I mean, that being said, I don't think it matters that much. I don't. I don't think the portraits were that. Amazing, no, it's but, not. I mean, I, 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 get nice. it, I, I get it, wanting to get. You know, I mean, you should get it all. Like, yeah, it's weird. She earned it. Yeah, I agree. Is is odd. That's design. Very surprising that they thought that was. I mean, they. I don't know what they were thinking. No, um, they th and they thought they would get away with it too. Yeah. But, uh, nope. Now with this player base, God, <laughs> if we can find something to complain <laughs> about, we sure will. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is something I was completely unaware of until I saw people complaining about it. I didn't even know this was a problem. <laughs> no. well, you're, you know what? You're part of the problem, all right? right. You should... <laughs> I mean, yeah. I yeah. mean, bronze I only got the bronze roller. Uh, so it's not like there's. I'm getting multiple tiers of rewards from last season. Go get your I think bronze you made portrait. the right choice, Gyorgy, because bronze is going to be the hardest to get eventually because everyone will be so good at oh, it. Oh, yeah, that's true. No one will be in that tier anymore. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Everyone will be so good at it. Everyone will just be like at like gold or crystal tier. Yeah, right? There'll be no one left at bronze. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I know you guys joke, but it is so easy to get these ranks. It is like... It's it's kind of a broken system, but I'm fine with it being broken. I don't really care about Elo and all that shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I uh, okay. Well, uh, anyways, they fixed it for those of you that complained. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have known. I would never have known. Exactly, Lakil. Um, <laughs> but I don't think. I mean, they've not even handed out the rewards anyway. So no, that's true. Right. Uh, get your bronze plate. Get your bronze <laughs> portrait. And you got to wear it proudly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will wear it with uh, the utmost pride. A uh, bronze king. Yeah, I'm a bronze king. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm thanking the recent events. Thank, thank you. you, recent events, for, for joining you. us today. Uh, it's time to read Mog Mail. So uh, let's just jump into it. Here we go. This is from This Is My Tune from Sargatanus. Uh, they also said, I think I spelled it right. Yes, you did. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm one of those WoW refugees from 2021. So on behalf of all of us, sorry. I know Tune is a forbidden word around these parts, but it's just my <laughs> username. Don't hate me. Uh, don't worry. Uh, my question is uh, one that I can't uh, know for myself since I'm relatively new. How much spaghetti do you feel has been cleaned out of the backend code since A Realm Reborn? When was it 
most noticeable, and do you think the code base is getting cleaner or spaghettier as time has gone by? I notice plenty of quality of life I'm used to from Warcraft isn't always present. When I started the little check mark for minions and stuff, uh, that denotes you already claim the item didn't yet exist, for example. But I'm wondering what hope there is to see more features like this that come to the game. Chat bubbles, maybe? Thanks for the content, guys. Um, yeah. Um... Thank you for knowing your place about <laughs> saying tunes. That is I'm true. so sorry. That is really You're not funny. valid for saying that. That is really I funny. Rem- <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember back when this game launched. Yeah. Or at least around my born launch. <laughs> oh, you yeah. would see people genuinely use that term. Well, and then you would, there was a, but that was like What's a wrong battle. With tune? No, we don't, Mela. The, in 14, I don't know if you missed that, like, part of, like, the game's, uh, like, the beginning of the game. There was a war over that word. We don't use tune in 14. You're a character. Your character. Mm-hmm. A tune is a Warcraft thing, or, like, not 14. That was very important. Um, that has since died off. I don't think... Well, I don't really meet a lot of people that call their characters a tune. I can't really think no. of any. No. Because... I've- yeah, we use alts. You know, if it's not your main, it's your alt. You're right. There you go. That, yeah. That's yeah. easy peasy. Mm-hmm. Tune. What is a cartoon? Well, that, a that's cartoon? it's a surefire it's way of, well, of that's knowing. Where it comes from. Yeah, it's it's a way of spotting a WoW player is if they refer to their character as a tune. You know that they've played Warcraft <laughs> in the past because that's that's what they call their characters uh, in World of Warcraft. I, I I think it's just like a holdover, like early early MMOs. Oh like. yes. Oh for sure. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah 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 yeah. Um, but yes, uh, so, um, I wouldn't say it's a forbidden word now, though. It's just very rare. I think most people just adapt to calling <laughs> it a character it's just immediately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like when you see people who are like, oh, watch out. Here comes the dynamo mechanic. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> dynamo, shut up. <laughs> say what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh. so about the spaghetti, um, how much spaghetti do you think has been cleaned out of the backhand code since a realm reborn? When was it more noticeable? And do you think the code base is getting cleaner or spaghettier? More <sighs> than you would yeah. think, I but think, less than you would hope. I think we have lost more than we've gained, but I there. I think to make these systems work, they've introduced even more intertwined spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, there they've was... got a bad backend, and they've pushed it to the limit. And yeah. they've added systems we thought they never would be able to, but at what cost? Right. I don't think it's by cleaning up the engine. I think it's by brute forcing more. Well, weird. they have talked about ones that they've specifically disentangled. Like, they essentially rebuilt the companion code from the, the ground up. That's they true. That's true. essentially removed what they had from 1.0 and started again. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, there's, I mean, A Realm Reborn had like an extreme technical debt though, because they had to cut so many corners to just make the game look fine. But that meant yeah. that there was just a huge tangle of spaghetti behind. I remember, like, remember when you couldn't have, I and mean, we still suffer from this uh, to this day. So that's kind of still there, but it's less noticeable now. But you couldn't keep a certain amount of windows open; it would close them for you. Oh, like, that's true. I forgot about that. Yeah. So th- that was a big deal, um, and we still have it today. But it's like, for instance, you couldn't, and that's not too long ago, when you couldn't have, was it the crafting window open and the market board open? It would close yeah, the crafting board. Yeah, it would yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I needed to see what I need. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely something. Uh, and that's, I think, a PS3 thing, where the PS3 could only show so much on the screen. Mm-hmm. And that was just sort of, I don't know, hard-coded into the game that you couldn't show a certain amount of windows. And now they are working really hard to, like, untangle that mess. And they're almost there, I think, with the windows. There is still a little bit, and this was more noticeable noticeable in A Realm Reborn as well, is when you opened a window, you would hear the sound effect go off, but the window would load, like, maybe a mm. second later. Mm. That was a huge annoyance with, that, with, like, early A Realm Reborn, was the delay from, like, opening a window. And that was, for a 1.0 player, pretty recognizable from 1.0. So that's, <laughs> I think, a, a thing that was just a leftover uh. Uh, from then. Um, I know we joke about it, like uh-huh, new players from like Shadowbringers and like Wild Refugees just don't know what we had to deal with <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like, it, uh, like uh, the game you're playing today 
would have blown the minds of like someone playing in Realm Reborn. Yeah. Like, wow, you can do roulettes with your friends. <laughs> That's yeah. unheard of. Yeah. You can teleport while mounted. What? Witchcraft? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is this a new game entirely? Another thing that's like a lot of what I have to talk about, like spaghetti is like relating to windows, like the windows in the game, like the UI. But there's another thing that's always bothered me. And that's that we don't like there's well, actually we do. And that's the annoying part. We don't really have dynamically updating windows. Like we can't the party finder is a great example. Like that's a, a system mm. that's really suffered from like the spaghetti in this game for a long time. Even though we had a massive rehaul uh, overhaul in um, uh, was it end of Stormblood when we got the new party finder system? Yeah, I think it was Stormblood. Yeah, I was it was around end of Stormblood, start of Shadowbringers. Yeah. But if you, if you, I mean, if you've ever made a party finder, you know how annoying this is. That you you open a party finder. One of the people, let's say you have three or four other people in your party already, you open the party finder just as someone is about to change job. Uh, the party finder will only show you what role they were the moment you open the window. It does not mm -hmm. change that to reflect the new party composition. And you have to close the party finder to like make it like refresh. That's such a backwards way of doing it. And that's... Uh, we have we have windows that can update dynamically now. We have like the timers window, for instance, which is able to show a ticking clock and all that. There's stuff like that that changes dynamically. But that, I think that's like a big problem in this, like a big, like for, not a problem for like us to the players, but like for the game to like show, like dynamically changing things in a window. Um, even like things like the, the um, free company window, Think about like if you just think about that for a second, like when someone logs off and you still have the window open, they're still online until you close and reopen mm. it, right? Oh, so yeah. Basic things like that. This game just can't deal with it. Your friends list has to go through the order you added them in. Yes. Before then updating. Yeah. To who's online. At the time. You would yeah. think a more a more intelligent way of doing that would be to ping who's online and then just show you the online people first mm -hmm. instead of like going through the whole like it's kind of it's weird. It's it's an old <laughs> that, I, that's some spaghetti. I, yeah, I think the game's come a long way, but I, I with the back end it has, I don't think this game will ever have uh, an acceptable uh, quality of life for what I would have envisioned from an MMO for 20, right. but like for this era, a lot of MMOs have lots of very backwards features and I don't know, it feels like the genre is kind of... It just comes with the, the genre, direction. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not gone where I would have expected it to go. Well, but yeah, I don't, the, the issue... The issue with the genre is that it's always based on something that was made years ago. You yes. can't completely yeah. like uh, update the entire system just because everything else around it is updated. And the, and the game is live, so they they can't just stop well, and be like, yeah. "Okay, guys, we're just going to update everything now." Like for, we have we'll have a year of just like doing just updates to existing systems. We would never. That would be mm. a year of complete drought. Mm. So, yeah, like they essentially did that with between 1.0 and Realm Reborn. It was lucky that they made it work that time. Yeah. Well, that yeah. is true. But it, that that was, they still had to work with uh, 1.0. So that's why this game will never be mm. well, th that's as modern as you back then. But I will say, though. accepted it back then because 1.0 was. Horrible. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But now that it's been a decade or whatever. Mela, it's part of I, our identity, it all is. right? The jank is what makes this game. You can't take it away. It's integral. How dare you want to fix it? <laughs> Fuck you. I'm trying to think of like a specific thing that's like really surprising that they pulled off in this game. Like, I know that Very, there are. Um, mm, there are some uh, things that I'm like, wow, I can't believe. Like the adventure plate is kind of impressive. And it's. Yeah. I think one thing that impressed me most with this game is the amount of checks it has. Right. Like built in, like if you're falling through the air, it will, it, you know, it will give you an error message saying why you can't do what you try. You know, it has yeah. a lot of like catches. Mm -hmm. Sincerely, uh -huh. I think the world travel system really amazing. Like it's like a little mm. janky, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. pretty unheard of to like connect data centers together for like different regions. Yeah. In most of them, I feel like, like that's not a. That's true. I mean, that's like a common request, but you just say, ah, it's, it's not fucking possible. <laughs> shut, right. shut up. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, here, like, servers in other locations, yeah. Like yeah. some, like Eve, for example, has just one 
global server, but that's just based in, I guess, Iceland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In and, Iceland, and said, which is like, I think, the least convenient location for a server <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Anyways, going through They've said that the data center transfer system is like capable of allowing you to already go to other like mm-hmm. global areas. They just haven't done it yet. Right. No, yeah. So I mean, that's yeah. Like, very impressive, if true. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I will say. Chat bubbles. I've been on that since like since the day <laughs> of this podcast. I've been like, please add chat bubbles. I agree. And someone asked them. It's so no. weird because we already have chat bubbles for NPCs. No, no, no. They either either Rollo. They either add chat bubbles and a glamour log, or we don't get anything. <laughs> what mean with you? I don't care. I've adapted, all right? Yeah. I don't have that many outfits I need anyway. Well, that's a good mm-hmm. point that you're bringing out, because that it's is... not about the outfits. That, is, that, <laughs> that showcases the Achilles heel of this game, and we, we talk about... Like, I was going to say that the skeleton of 1.0 has mostly decomposed at this point. There's not much left of it. Mm. But the fact that we can't have a glamour log is like the one like proof that it still lingers to the point where it actually is preventing us from getting certain things like still the built on the tibia of 1.0 the yeah. last bone yeah yeah. Fall. yeah because remember no, that's an mmo <laughs> tibia. a lot of people are very misinformed about how for like what 1.0 and a realm reborn's relationship is uh First of all, we're not even running on the same engine anymore. I am so tired of people saying that we're running on crystal tools. Did you not watch Fallen Rise when I told you we're not running on crystal tools? We're not running on crystal tools. Uh, we're running on uh, a branch of Luminous engine, which is the same engine that 15 runs on. Uh, which, And still we have the, all the code. That's the thing. The code that forms the basis of our world. That's 1.0. And they've just evolved mm-hmm. it. So... Well, what could they have done, though? It's amazing they made it's that. It's incredible. That it's an incredible feat of just game it, development. It's, yeah, it's so impressive. Yeah. But it's held us back. Yeah. And that's the issue, which is why, I, I like, as no matter how great this game gets, it could have been better. Yeah. And I that's mean, the sad part about well, it. <laughs> you know, I've made my piece already. Oh like, no! Uh, yeah, the game's so odd. I've been playing I mean, it for also, so long. But remember, I'm not going to play it forever, we, am we, I? Uh, I've enjoyed my time, but the email is so defeatist because he can't get a glamour look. <laughs> <laughs> the doomer right here. <laughs> because I love having the a more, doomer. Because if you look at like a realm reborn and i wish it was like if i had like a video of someone extensively showing all the systems that existed at launch you would see how fucking f- impossibly far we have come since yeah. the sh- mm-hmm. bullshit that was one i mean we <laughs> i love a realm reborn but a realm reborn was very unfinished there was like it, it, it systems took forever to load there were hardly any systems at launch there were no you had a million little buttons at the bottom of your screen oh, for that, all yeah, the menu yeah, shit. that was good i like the orange that. buttons yeah the system menu yeah, yeah. Oh, bring that back no I no I no, no, just kidding. It was terrible. No, no, I'm, I'm joking. No, horrible, <laughs> horrible. Right. Yeah, uh, and I think that over time, there's going. We're going to. It's just going to get better because, as, in fact, I think as the game gets older and they let's say we reach the point where they're like, let's scale back on new content because we've reached sort of a peak. We're like, we can start relaxing now. That's maybe when they start go back and be like, okay, let's focus on stuff. Let's do some in-house maintenance. Let's, 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 yeah. let's untangle some spaghetti now that we have the time. Uh, and I think that can happen. And maybe by I the end so of its life, it'll be worthy of being like a 20, 30, 40 game. <laughs> I don't know yeah. when this game ends. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> 2030, maybe. Yeah, 2030. Not, not about whether or not it makes it 2040. I actually do think it will make it to 2040. I think so, it's too. Just my, my question would be whether it will get to the level of a 2040 well, remember, game. We're getting a well, huge maybe. graphical update in 7.0. That's what I was about true. to bring up. That is something very impressive that they have promised to us. Yeah, because that was also yeah. sort of... I in, mean, the, what yeah. they've shown from it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that was very early like work as well that they were showing. Uh, and the they've... idea of multi- more like lighting sources is crazy for this game. Yeah. Yeah. Good grass. Maybe Azim's step won't look trash. Mm-hmm. That would be it nice. Doesn't look trash. I don't, I, 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 you're like the only person I've heard of. Like, yeah, I thought. I think bad. it's oddly. Like, no, it looks fine. It looks nice. I don't know what you're if expecting. It's meant to be like a grassland meadow. It's very flat. 
Mm. That's, that's a step. Yeah. That's what a step is. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was, I don't know, it's not going to have like long, tall, lush grass. I well, think. they showed nice, long, tall, lush grass. But in not the, in uh, Azim Step. I can't remember where they showed it. It was just in a random field, I think. I don't think we actually saw where it was. Or was it in Thavnir? I don't remember. No, it was It was in um, Fairy Place. Oh. Oh. Uh, Ilmeg, Ilmeg, yeah. Ilmeg. Yeah. Right. Ilmeg. Right. That's where it was. Yeah. Um, you know... I think if we went back in time and tried to play a Realm Reborn right now, like, you know, let, you know what? Let's give us a little bit of a movie. We're going to start playing at 2.2 2 or like 2.4, mm, okay. you know? It's so like, no. housing's there. No. Housing's there. 2.0, no. no. dude. No, let's go I just want to base a Realm Reborn just so I you want can understand. To experience it. Yeah. For, I want people I to be able to re experience it. Very uh, strong, uh, uh, very strong positive feelings about 2.0. And I think going back now you do. might ruin that for me. Yes. Yeah, that's what oh, I wanted. A hundred million percent. I, just, I, I, I would not rolling my on... eyes at I'm enjoying Final Fantasy XIV. No, but you, 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 tend to love, your eyes at that. you tend to love things when they're further uh, away in time. No, I prefer <laughs> the game now. I just have good memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just... Fine, I, I would call like, it unplayable, but it would be a struggle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a big of a struggle. I know it'd be 2010, but... It, I, it's, mm. Yeah. I wonder how it would work with this modern community in... Because you remember when you had to just shout, like, hey, let's do Hawkman yeah, or whatever. Another thing that you might uh, already find difficult is that you could not click to teleport on the map. Uh, and also, nothing was categorized. There was no categories in the teleport list. Uh, they yeah, were just listed great, in just uh, in order. Any old order. Yeah, on the list. The only so. thing that made that better is it randomized the order every time. Also, you couldn't Ooh. click on the Ethernet shards on the map either. So you know, the, and that's very recent. But I feel like mm -hmm. already I'd be f it, uh, would fuck me up, Gonrola. Mm -hmm. Like, here's one I think people just don't realize and don't even really think about. The gear from a Realm Reborn, and I mean this up until like Heaven's Word, looked like shit, <laughs> especially to what we have now. Yeah, like, Whoa. could you imagine like a modern player going back and like, all right, cool, new patch coming out, or like a, a player with like modern expectations that we have in terms of like gear and what it looks like and the quality of it? And it's like, all right, cool, new patch gear coming out, dark light gear, let's take a look at it. Oh, yeah. Rollo, I I will agree with you on some parts, but don't you dare talk about the high mithril yeah. tin can outfit. <laughs> <laughs> or like, or even the twenty four mech, like the crystal tower gear is. No, imagine I would Shitty. cry. I would cry if Yoshi P <laughs> held up a printout and it was that tin can outfit. Okay, I will. <laughs> I'm I'm proud of it. <laughs> we have to add the the Allegan gear from Coil. Is still pretty good. That's nice gear. Okay, the yeah. replica is a specialist. Yeah, you can die, but yeah, that the is nice gear. One care. set, <laughs> or the, uh, I guess three sets or whatever. Technically, yeah, yeah. Those three sets. Okay, they look cool, right? It's mm -hmm. cool, elegant stuff. Mm -hmm. I, 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 all yeah, the crystal I tower think... stuff looks shit, except maybe like the onion gear. I yeah, like no, that. I the, don't uh, the agree with you. That light gear. I, th <laughs> I think. I think the gear from Labyrinth and uh, World of Darkness looks good. I don't think the gear from Crystal Tower looks good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I, Whichever one drops gear. the the light gear is good. I think that's Labyrinth. That's yeah. Labyrinth. Yeah. 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 That's a great set. You can't you can't say anything other than that. I I just think there is a high there is a significant jump in quality. And oh, yeah. when it came to gear, like, yeah. and just 100%. stuff looking cool. It's mm -hmm. not even like like texture quality, just like design sensibilities. Like, oh, like this looks like cool armor. And I know oh. Realm Reborn reused gear from one point. Like, yeah, I they reused all of it. In fact, we are there, yes. Rollo. <laughs> we are kind of on like our third or fourth recolors of a lot of gear, though. Well, well like, like, it's an MMO. Stuff. We yeah, have to, I mean, but and a lot uh, of it's just like. It's leveling gear, or it'll be like some dungeon gear, but they still introduce like. You have a to lot remember, Mela, this game is starting to get very big in terms of disc oh, space I know. required. I'm, I'm getting excited <laughs> because the more out, like, items they add. Yeah. The, 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 like, the, they, they keep telling yeah. us about the limits they have for adding things. Yeah. <laughs> At yeah. what point are they going to be like, right, we're having 7.0, but unfortunately we're going to have to delete like all of the level 1 to 20 outfits? Yeah. Oh, oh please. 
Yeah. It's not even just the gear, it's the meshes for every like mm-hmm. character. Yeah. yeah. And then all just the trash they add in, like because they're gonna have to add in like fifty new fruits to harvest <laughs> for the new pie you can make. Yeah. I yeah, gonna, I would love it gonna... oh. if they um if they added like the Destiny 2 vault and sunsetting stuff to 14. <laughs> They're like, hey guys, the no. game's getting too big. We just can't make like slow times, file sizes. It's just too much. So all of their Realm Reborn gear you've ever earned and like no. uh, the relics, uh, no. it's all in the vault. Rollo. It never, you'll Absolutely. see the icon in your in your inventory, no. but it's not usable. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, they have they have kind of done that in the past, especially with like the remember the the all the material that we've lost over the years that just turned into crack material. That is true. Yeah, but that is the reason I've never picked up Destiny Two again since buying it at launch. Because all the content I've oh, yeah, done now. We've already talked about this, so let's not <laughs> let's not derail into that. But yeah, that's uh, that's quite disastrous if they did that here. Crash system. Yeah. Um, Never all right. do that in your game. Well, uh, there you go. This is my tune, um, as you can see. Uh, or yeah, and do you know what? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the word tune to the degree these guys have shashed at you for. Okay. <laughs> I didn't it's say. I'll, I'll give you the tune pass. I said the guy community. trying to portray us as the villains. Oh, <laughs> you, n- you noble WoW player here! I see protecting, protecting. Uh. I see, I see. What a knight. Uh, anyways, this is my tune. I accept your username. It's fine. I think it's you can call it whatever you want. Um, exactly. Some people call yeah. uh, their char- uh, character uh, Warrior of Light as well. So yeah, yeah. do what which you would want. Be, <laughs> which would be pretty cring in a different MMA. You can reclaim that term, this is my tune. That's right. Yeah, It's right, become right. so archaic that it means nothing to most 14 players. That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, you can send us more mock mail if you'd like. Six, uh, s- why did I say six? six I, I was about to say 69, 69. I- Oh, no. 69 69 no. if you're on uh, Ragnarok uh, Chaos. Oh uh, sorry, that is uh, a reference few will get. Uh, all right. Um, what am I doing? Or not. Uh, well, I'm talking to slash mogmail. Thank you. Yes. Speakersofv.com slash mogmail uh, for mogmail. All right, let's jump into our main story, which is a dev blog interview uh, with the localization team. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, probably the ones doing some of the biggest like work in the game, like the the hard. I mean, I would say game development is pretty hard. They're make, literally making a game, but also this game is Japanese uh, and needs to be localized to uh, other languages as well, um, like English, French, yeah, German, German, and that's it. That's, and it. that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the four major yeah, languages. Yeah, no other languages in this yeah. game is translated into no, Likia. No, <laughs> those are but the that's world a lot. languages. That's still a lot, considering how oh, much yeah, in- text there is in this fucking yes. game. Oh, I uh, think that's the entire reason that they're never going to commit to another language. Right. Yeah, imagine, just, again, imagine opening like, <laughs> it's time for Spanish localization. They're like, well, now you need to do <laughs> 10 years worth of content. Uh, mm. Yeah. Listen, I just can't believe that they were like, all right, major languages are going to translate this game. Japanese or Japanese. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, Japanese game. English, you know, of course, popular Western language. Mm-hmm. French. Which is like one of it's like the the third biggest language it that is. originated yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, still still heavy hitter. Yeah. German? <laughs> yeah, see that one. Reason for this, Rollo, is they knew they wanted to serve us there yeah. at some point. That okay. German is the weirdest one uh, out of the I, localized languages. I don't know why they me, didn't go for Spanish. Yeah, they should have gone for thinks Spanish. That the reason they picked German and French is because, I mean, I, I might be speaking out of turn here, but they, ha- I think they have language council? So, <laughs> so it's easier standard, to... Like, uh, no. So there's like a standardized version of it, whereas Spanish has seen a level of adaption similar to English, but it's not spoken by as many people as English. Listen, so I, they oh, don't care about it as much, sadly. Well, they, Spanish yeah, speakers on. have already accepted that if someone just lives across the border from you, 
Whatever he says will just mean nothing to you half the time. Yeah, anyway. if, if they if they localized to Spanish, a, a sp like European Spanish definitely has a language council. I'm pretty sure. So okay. they would they would use European Spanish oh, for. Oh, for I, don't they would, I don't know if they would use European Spanish because it's not the most common form of Spanish in the world. Well, it's not. Well, Latin American Spanish Spanish German? Is very... <laughs> what, what is German then? <laughs> Spoken in Germany? <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. I think I think it'll be EU Spanish because it, it would, would probably be, be under Spanish. Spanish. Well, Spanish. No, Spanish. I think it would be EU Spanish because yeah, because they're the ones that do the localization. Yeah. I'd, could you? I I know I I want to hear a Spanish like a European Spanish stuff of this game. It'd be so horrendous. It'd be like oh oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what what would you say? I'm sorry to the European uh, Spanish people. Yeah, that sorry are Spanish to. people. I'm, I am sorry. I'm not going to play a game that says, get the hold on. <laughs> no. Okay. That's not how you say fuck off. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Jesus. Well, I don't think they'd say that in this game. No. No. no they... Baus bolas. That is true, though. Yeah, they, speak, they speak German in Austria and Switzerland, too. That is true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's still Belgium. a big language population, like, but it... It seems like a major skip from French mm. to German, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it is weird. It's weird it's that they. Pretty, yeah, but yeah. whatever. Whatever. They picked it. They can't go back. Now. No, it's too late now. I think we are. I think we are also like ignoring the fact because we can't access these languages. It is also translated into Korean and Chinese. Yeah, that's that is true. true. Major languages too. Um, that's a, that must have been a big job because they came quite late to those games. But the, those countries. But in. I have a feeling those localization teams are like detached. Like they're like in a different oh, yeah. branch oh, altogether. They probably rewrite the story slightly. Mm -hmm. Really, I'm pretty sh sure they do. Possibly. <laughs> I, I don't know. Especially for well, one of the countries. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> what's up, Beijing? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I will say, I will say, mate. It's also possible they pick German in France because those are countries that Japan has like an infatuation with. Oh yeah, that's, that's also, also true. true. That's also yeah, true. I mean, I think there's multitude of reasons for this. I'm sure there's like, it's good business sense to them or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But God, it's just such a, an entire continent. Well, <laughs> just, it is. It is also it, but, interesting it, because English, German, and French are like the business languages of Europe as well. So yeah. it might. Yeah, there's a lot of. The, factors I think there. the issue, Rollo, is that Spanish isn't a business although... language in Europe. Sorry, what? Spanish isn't a business language in Europe. No. No. Oh, how dare you! <laughs> I think. I, I think the issue, Rollo, is that although South America has Portuguese and Spanish. Mm -hmm. The the game isn't really served there, is it? They would have to connect to North America. Well, it's, or, it's it's uh, not served there, but you don't really give them the option in the first place. No, you know? I know, mm, but no. like there are some MMO developers, like Amazon, for mm. example, who do have South American servers, so they would put that F in. Yeah. yeah. Whereas with 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 this game, they would do Spanish for Europe. Mm. Mm -hmm. They probably aren't yeah. thinking about that. Give us a Portuguese general, dub. That's what I want. <laughs> All right. In general, gaming in South America is very expensive, so a lot of people yeah, don't even have access to things, sadly. Yeah. But it's true. getting better. It is From what better. I understand. Mm -hmm. so, yes. That's good. Yes. Anyways, uh, let's jump into the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking to... <laughs> uh, Pamela and Odilon. Yeah, Paul, Pamela and Odilon uh, from the localization team. Localization team is responsible for translating 14, which is developed in Japanese, into our supported languages. But did you know they also handle a variety of other tasks in addition to translating in-game text? Uh, so this is a big interview, so it's actually in two parts, but we'll be reading it as one. All right, so the interview uh, interviewer is Hama, uh, and yeah, Hama is the interviewer. To start us off, could you tell us about yourself? So Paul begins, my name is Paul Chandler. Uh, okay. and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm one of the little thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm one of the English translation leads for Final Fantasy XIV. As one might expect, I've always had an interest in Japan from games and anime. We can we've confirmed, but my reason for making a more concert, concerted effort in learning the language and eventually moving to Japan stems from Final Fantasy XI. Believe it or not, I believe it. I played it for about six years, and in that time, I made a number of good Japanese friends. Uh, the game and bad ones too. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. The game has a built-in translation function that tries to help bridge the language gap, but it wasn't enough for me. I seized what few opportunities I had to learn Japanese and eventually stumbled upon a program that allowed me to travel abroad. Uh, 
I'd always dreamed of working in the gaming industry, but I never thought I'd get to pay forward the myriad adventures I had in, f in 11 by working on 14. Look at this guy talking shit about the auto translate feature in this game. Yeah, well, 11, but yeah. like probably by extension 14 because I don't think it's that much better. I think than it's 11. essentially the same one. Yeah, they just, uh, yeah. Excuse me, I seem to have misplaced my keyboard. Yeah, I think that one also exists in 11 and it even has the same arrows when you do it. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so Pamela. My name is Pamela, uh, and I have been working for Square Enix and on Final Fantasy XIV for three and a half years as the lead of the German team. Oh. Um, as a child... Oh. <laughs> jawohl. As a child, I was the biggest fan of Sailor Moon. This love led me to Japanese pop culture as a whole, and later on to Japan's history, politics, and language. After graduating from high school, I thus decided to try my hand at turning this hobby into a proper career and picked up Japanese studies at college. Since my second biggest passion in life has always been creative writing, becoming a translator seemed rather natural to me. So, why Square Enix? Well, Final Fantasy belongs to Japanese pop culture as beer belongs with a pretzel, doesn't it? Oh, so German. Very German. Uh, I think okay. in the States you'd say soft pretzel, not the sweet abominations. I think those do well with... I think those, I don't think those do well with beer. So oh the German Pamela. stab at the Americans, we like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is there a difference? I didn't know. I thought the pretzel was well, the pretzel. Well, there you go. There oh you my go. God, you heathen. You heathen. <laughs> As such, after graduating from college, I promptly moved to Japan, tried my luck, and the rest is history, as they say. Can I quickly say, this has made me remember something that I don't like about the English translation in this game. Uh -huh. They speak with British accents, oh, but yeah. the game uses American English. Yes. That Weird choice. Because well, it's bad it's, choice. Because it's dumb. Disgusting. In well, England, yeah, disgusting. But localized by Americans. Yeah, and that's yeah, it's because that's it's, 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 Paul it's localized by Americans in Japan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something wrong with them. Yeah, it's Paul's fault though. We know that. Yeah, I'd love it if this. I know this guy won't say, it, but I'd love it if this guy was like. I don't speak a lick of Japanese. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've got no interest in the culture. It's just, just a day job for me. <laughs> it's time for Odilon. My name is Odilon. I'm the lead translator for the French Can't be a real name. version. I was going to say, I, I, I'm not, I don't know much about French, but why aren't you telling us your real name? Uh, yeah. Odilon. Odilon. Hey, Odilon. Some people just you know, respect their privacy. That's yeah. okay. Well, maybe they, they, these are all the fir front first names of their characters. He's just oh, the only yeah, one who went for like a fantasy-esque yeah. name uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so paul, so paul chandler went with like his real yeah, name yeah my name is paul chandler uh and and pamela <laughs> or, or your white paul she didn't yeah. give us a last name no she didn't even pamela give us Pretzel. so we've just as further yeah the further down we went the less information they gave about yeah. themselves so now we've made it to Odilon. i'm the lead translator for the french version version of final fantasy 14. growing up in france in the late 80s early 90s you got to see a whole lot of japanese anime on tv and of course video games were booming as well i also trained in martial arts which gave me my first wow. experience with the Japanese language. I wanted to learn more, so I started talking Jap sorry, taking Japanese taking. classes in high school and decided <laughs> to major in Japanese studies in college. I went on my first trip to Japan during my second year, and by the time I completed un university, I wasn't very satisfied with my abilities and decided I should spend at least a year in Japan. Sixteen years later, I still haven't left. Oh my oh. god, they, they wow. got trapped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At first, I trained in FFL, the French equivalent of EFL, English as foreign language, oh, and taught okay. French for a few years. Oh, that years. was his martial arts. <laughs> I had the opportunity to work as an interpreter on a game show in Paris, and within a year, I quit my teaching career and secured enough work translating and interpreting. Fast forward to 2019, I've been told there was an opening for a Japanese to French trans... For ja sorry, for Japanese to French translators at Square Enix, and I knew I wouldn't, I couldn't miss out on that opportunity. It, so there I you guess go. He didn't. Um, no. Uh, so if you uh, go to the article. It's a picture of his Lullafell in a summoner outfit with a Ronka next to it. Yes. Ah. Okay, now on to the actual interview part. Uh, each of you come from such fascinating backgrounds, but it seems all three of you began from a common interest in Japanese games and anime. Next, could you explain the localization workflow for 14? For example, what sort of tasks do you do, sorry, do you work on dur uh, during a particular patch update? Paul says, the first thing that usually cross our desks are lists of items, actions, 
place names, and so on that will be appearing in the update. Our other English lead, Kate, oversees these, and when reviewing said lists, offers feedback and suggestions to ensure everything is consistent and cohesive within the world of 14. So Kate is the nah. the, 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 the new uh, Koji Fox yeah. while he's working on 16. She was I, don't like, know, I, I don't know if he's ever coming back. Take his old job. Yeah. No, we don't know. I mean, but he, he is, does work. He does do like ad hoc work. They have. 14, they have yet to say the original role back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Kate is probably his his uh, his boss. Yeah, yeah. Well, Paul. No, boss. yeah, Paul. Well, no, because Koji, Koji Fox, Fox is, is the localization lead for all of uh, yeah. division. What's it called? Something Division Three. Business Division Three. Business creative Division Three. Division. Creative Business. Oh, it's Division Creative three. Business. Jesus. Yeah, they said they when they explained that Kate had taken Koji's Fox, they actually did say that Koji was yeah. promoted to be the lead of the whole um, division. Yeah. In yes. terms of localization. Yes. Uh, we also have meetings, uh, Odilon says, we also have meeting, maybe I should do it in the accent. No. no <laughs> so you no, know who I am. We also a, have meetings. That would, a, that would be a catastrophic <laughs> error. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we also have meetings, <laughs> but, but you know, you can imagine me doing the accent when I read yeah, this. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Same yeah. Same yeah. Our silly accents when we're doing the Hildebrand yeah. storyline. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, we also have meetings with the development teams and sometimes are asked to pitch in some characters slash localization slash item names. Uh, Paul says, next usually comes the script for voice recordings. Work on the script usually entails peppering the writers with questions and meeting with both the scenario team and cutscene team to make sure everything will match up with all languages once recordings are done. When the script is written and it's time to begin recording, one or two translators will oversee recordings via Zoom for now, working with the voice director to ensure the actors fully understand the context of the story and get the best performance we can. So does that mean that outside of COVID times that they actually fly them to wherever the voice actors record? I guess. They must yes. have done it in a studio somewhere and they either t brought them over or all congregated well, there. Well, the other... Well, the voice actors wouldn't trans tr wouldn't move because well, that's more people. All the other languages are done in Square Enix Europe's headquarters, so it would... Maybe it would be... I don't know how they used to do it, if maybe all the recordings were done in one spot. So they would just all go there. Or no, wait, they would have offices in all three uh, locations. Square Enix Europe has offices. No, they would definitely. Yeah, I don't think they would force like so they a would lot just of the British go. voice actors are like pretty prominent British actors. I don't oh, think yeah. they would make this the time for them to dust fly. Yeah. 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 I don't know then. Interesting though, that it's the, the translation team directly working with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, uh, again, this is, uh, it's got that Japanese flair on it, so there's lots of fluff text in between from the interviewer. I oh, see. Yeah. So you have to work on the script first, since the voice recordings take place before all the in-game text is finished. Paul says, around the time we're wrapping up voice recordings, we've also likely begun work on the various quests and content to be seen in a given patch. Odilon says, before we can tackle the translation of the game, we spend some time reading development documents that allow us to get a better understanding of what's to come for the next patch or expansion, the familiarization phase. As the lead translator, I'm also in charge of dispatching the task uh, between the members of the team. Final Fantasy XIV is a massive game, so we try to keep things new for everyone by rotating who's in charge of which content with every patch expansion. Uh, once the planning is set and the text ready to translate, usually each translator is in charge of a specific content, i.e. the MSQ, RAID, etc. Oh, no matter what would, what would be the worst to get? MSQ. What would be the worst specific? No, that would be the, well, it'd be the hardest. Yeah, and that would be the worst. I th uh, To me, hardest but is I the think, worst. I think mail is... I'm also thinking like the most boring. Yeah, like guild has translator or something, you know, like something just we don't have that anymore. <laughs> Beast tribe maybe? No. You, you, have, you can have some fun with that. I suppose. I think the I think the most fun would be item descriptions. Oh items would oh, be great. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They just you just write whatever. No one double yeah. checks that. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, Pamela says, many people are under the impression that the German team translates from the English localized text, but the truth is that we indeed translate directly from the source Japanese. Thus, the lion's share of our work begins as soon as we receive the first batch of text from the development teams. Um, sure, Pamela. Yeah, thanks, Pamela. 
uh, Hama says, I play the game in general. I don't know why we're thanking Pamela for her <laughs> comment. <laughs> Hama says, I play the game in Japanese, but even then oh, I feel, feel like there's an... One of them. What, a Japanese person playing in Japanese? Crazy. Yeah. Typical. Yeah. I, I feel like there's an overwhelming amount of text in 14. It's incredible that the localization team translates all of that into each language simultaneously. Um, Odilon says, as Final Fantasy so, 14... Yeah, go on. I quickly, I just want to say, I know there are people that play the game in English with Japanese voices and Japanese people that play the game in Japanese with English voices. Are there people that play it in English or Japanese and then listen to the German or French dub? No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody listens to the French or German dub. I, I'd imagine people who are studying the language. That that's a pretty good way to yeah. study. I mean, that's that's a standard. If you just watch TV shows, you just mm. watch the dub and use the English subtitles. I've listened to the the German dub before. I thought that was quite funny. Why not the French dub? Because it's French. Yeah, <laughs> I think we'll kill. Well, we'll kill. Studied German, didn't you? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I understand German. So, but it, it's just it's I still, funny. Yeah, go on, go on. I still think one of the funniest things that they translated was the the sound Bismarck makes when you go into Anamnesis, uh, uh, Anamnesis Anida, and he has a different like groan. When oh he yeah, releases water in yeah. every language oh. for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Can't beat the English hall. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like that hall. Huh? Yeah, um, the German one's pretty good. What is the? I don't. I haven't listened to any of them. I don't. Don't ask it? me what the no. noise is. I just heard <laughs> people say that the German ah. one's funny. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, with truth, uh, just blah, 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 blah. yes, as Final Fantasy XIV, uh, so Odilon says, as Final Fantasy XIV is being made while we're translating, there are often changes in the original text, so we need to adjust our version to the latest revision by the end of the development cycle. Pam yeah, Pamela that sounds like hell. Yes. Like, especially if you're getting voice actors involved and they've recorded a line. The, for me, one of the most annoying things that can ever happen in a game is when what they say doesn't match what's written. Right. Like if it's in like a slightly different order, or if even one word's missing, it really bothers me. Of course, this bothers you. <laughs> it I, doesn't make sense. It's, some, it's something I take note of whenever I see it, but like, it's, yeah. I don't yeah. know, it bothers me to the same extent I, that it does me. No. Unless it's like a really egregious, like, mistranslation. Sometimes it's a completely different sentence that they speak <laughs> compared to what's written. It's so annoying. But it, you know, I just, it's like, oh yeah, maybe they messed up, or maybe they'll patch it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just think I think it's already commendable that this game does it so well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Pamela uh, continues implementing changes and additions from the Japanese side uh, often takes up just as much time as the initial translation itself, as well as cross checks and edits done on the German side. Once we're happy with the content, we hand it over to QA, who then sift out any remaining mistakes and inconsistencies. Top still comes through every now and then, but that's because this is a massive game. Yes, mm. yes. How much like very quick to... Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah, they're very quick to fix things. I was yeah. just going to say, I like when I get to interact with something that still has a text in Japanese, and then, well, I don't know what's happening. Ooh. Oh, that my, was fun. My favorite thing is every expansion, and it, there's, there's always one. There's like a couple skills where like the mouse over tooltip is in Japanese still. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's like in every expansion, there's been at least one. And, oh, and I, I remember there was like a know. fight. I don't remember the fight now, but where one of the like debuffs or attacks were still in Japanese as well. Oh. Like th that mm -hmm. happens. Um, okay, um, Paul. Paul adds. Uh, sorry, Hama says, that's a staggering amount of work. And not only that, but you also work on translating text outside of the game as well, right? Paul says, there's usually plenty of other work that begs for our attention as well, such as lore books, merchandise naming, album liner notes, and the like. So there's always something to fill our time. I uh, can imagine, yeah. Yeah. Pamela says, we take care of different web topics. Hello, Lodestone. Read the localization forums and address reported bugs and community feedback or offer support with lore questions or naming should the need arise. Yeah, so they, they, they show a, a little screenshot of like how they have, like we don't even think about it, but the Lodestone exists in all the localized languages. So whenever they're supposed on the Lodestone, they have to and be translated. Like those notes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they also provide translations for lore books. Uh, so yeah, that's a lot of work. 
Um, Do you like that on the lodestone? Yeah. The European English includes the Nordic flags. It does. Yeah. Well, I mean, because that's our language in fourteen. It's we are. It's nice. The but fact there's no like Spanish flag or no? it's just really specifically oh, oh, oh. all of the Nordics. <laughs> it is it's true. Really it is weird, isn't it? I don't know. Like, just, uh, I don't think Italy's on there either. No, right? no, no, it's, it's no. the Italian Union Jack, language. No. The Australian flag, and then all four Nordics. Five reason, reason doesn't exist. Though. Five Nordics. Wait, Iceland. They really oh, just that. said. Sorry, all the important ones, not Iceland. Oh, Iceland is not included. No. Oh it's, no. Uh, Denmark, Sweden, little then, brother. Uh, 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 no, which is the one that's red, then blue, then white, or whatever? Red, blue, and white. That's that's okay, literally let's not Norway. Focus on this right now. <laughs> Mela, did you just not <laughs> remember the Norwegian flag? No, I think he's doing oh, it God. as a joke. No, no right. he did. Sorry. I, I cannot I believe you. Oh my God, really? <laughs> you forgot. Oh, I, I was giving you. I was giving you flag. enough credit to say that it was a joke. <laughs> I thought you were joking as well. Goodness me. All right. I anyways, you existed. Moving on from that. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Does your approach to localization change depending on the type of content you're working on? Uh, Paul says, The text in Final Fantasy XIV is presented to players in a number of different ways, and so naturally there are different considerations to be taken for each situation. With voiced dialogue, for example, we have to think about not just the text on the page, but also the actors. A person's tone alone can convey just as much, <clears throat> if not more, than what is written, which can sometimes give us a little wiggle room in how lines are written while still staying true to the intent of the writers. By the same token, we also have to be wary of scenes where voices must match specific timing and character movements. Um, Pamela says, we make sure to faithfully transport dialogue and mood in quests, especially the main scenario, whereas item descriptions allow for more freedom. Character dialogue is all about creative writing, while action tooltips have to follow a specific format and need to be clear as well. Uh, sorry, I need to be clear as well as easy to understand. The approach stays the same either way. Our goal is to immerse players thoroughly in the world of Final Fantasy XIV and to create a relationship to every facet of the game. The main scenario is supposed to make you, you root for certain characters, while Triple Triad needs to offer a relaxing respite from an adventurer's life. As such, our approach is mainly to adapt our style from content to content to create a multifaceted experience. Relaxing. <laughs> A relaxing round of oh, triple yeah, so triad. So relaxing trying to kill that stupid guy in Curtis to get the Alpha No Analyze card, or <laughs> and he never drops it for like sixty matches. Yeah, yeah. Just get, just get good, dude. <laughs> you win every <laughs> single <laughs> match. It's not whether or not you get good; it's your RNG roller. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just have better luck. <laughs> you can't. Just have better uh, luck. <laughs> are you going to argue with me, Mela, about the clearly joke I said, have better luck, which is not possible? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that one getting you? Yeah. I am in disbelief. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Odilon uh, adds, it sounds obvious, but we don't approach dubbed dialogue the same way as tutorials or job actions. Some elements in the game have very specific syntax rules, where some are more open to creativity. Final Fantasy XIV will soon reach its nine-year anniversary since the release of A Realm Reborn, and with its cast of colorful, ca colorful characters, all of which have different speech patterns, a lot of our time is spent studying past occurrences and trying to maintain coherent writing between the dozen or so translate translators who have contributed to the game since its inception. So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Halma says, I can see why it'd be important to inspect for consistency since you're not translating on your own, but as a team. So, yeah, maintaining consistency, especially considering, I mean, this is, I mean, it's not their lives, you know, the translators come and go. So you just, it, it, that must be challenging hmm. to make sure, you know, you, you start a job at Square Enix as a translator. All of a sudden you have to know how to write like Kryl. And you have no, yeah, like, you need strange. to really fucking study. <laughs> There's a lot of material. Uh, yeah, that must be rough. Language too. Yeah. Like, they... These, well, yeah, like these characters have specific speaking styles in their native languages. That that's true. That's true. It's not easy, man. No. Oh yeah, you don't want to get a Rianchi. 
You don't, <laughs> no, <laughs> your first, that's rough. Your, your first yeah. day at work as a translator, you've been assigned Uriange for the MSQ, right? I, mean, <laughs> I know that we still make fun of Uriange's style of speaking, but it is actually less complicated than it used to be. Yeah, yeah that's true. Fair. That's because yeah, he true. sort of softened his walls around him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Still love no, that. It was Lord because Christ. people complain too much about how he talked. <laughs> no. no, he's mellowing. Well, to be fair, he does speak. He speaks a lot like uh, um, Louis Swa, and I feel like that's kind of yeah. why he spoke that way because it was like his his big uh, idol. But um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you listen to him from like a realm reborn. It, he almost sounds like he's in a different world when he speaks because uh, yeah, he's so really detached weird. from how everyone else speaks. That's his character. I know. Sense. I know. I know. <laughs> he's a it's fucking he little... reads books all the it's time. The, it's, how the, it's how scholars speak. I believe. The, yeah, I believe the canonical explanation they've given is because he chose. He preferred the company of books rather than mm. people when he was younger. He didn't. He adapted an older style of speaking. Yeah. It's yeah. surprising we can even understand him at all. I, mean, I, th I think that was all Moonbrita. I mean, uh, she I, was the one that got him out. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't exclusively reading books from like the 500th year of the Sixth Astral Era. Yeah. He was probably reading like modern like books as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Surian so Shay, one of the colorful characters. Yes. Uh, with white hair. <laughs> 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 yes. Most of the science. Yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, this is technically part two, but we we carry on. Um, Hama says, "Do you have any favorite part of the game that you worked on?" Paul says, Ooh. "In the many years I've worked on 14, I've had the pleasure of trying my hand at a little bit of nearly everything, from momentous dialogue moments in the main scenario to miscellaneous side quests, delivering packages in Limsa Laminsa." If I had to pick a favorite, or perhaps most memorable, it would have to be the Great Serpent of Ronka quest line from Shadowbringers. And I'm not Good simply choice. saying that because I fear the wriggly wrath of our Serpentine <laughs> Overlord. A very close second is quests from the Final Fantasy XI collaboration event, The Maiden's Rhapsody, as I have a soft spot for all things related to XI. Move on, Paul. Move on. <laughs> That's a you good quest, though. It is a good You're quest. You're really for... polarizing today, Mela. Yeah, you, you are like, really. Real doomer. Sometimes like... Mela's like this. He's like in like <laughs> he, just in attack mode for some reason. Yeah, I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying, to, I'm trying to say things. Yeah, I, I can tell. I mean, uh, I like the Maiden's Rhapsody, but it's not the best eleven crossover we ever had. No, 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 no. No. But as a, he's talking as an eleven player, so obviously it would it be fine, impactful though. for him. Oh, I'd say the Ronk is a good choice. Though. Ronk is good. Yeah, mm. I mean. It's one of the more iconic things that came out of Shadowbringers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Paul, uh, Pamela says, um, since I joined Square Enix right when the work on Shadowbringers kicked off, my very first con uh, content batch, the Fisher Quest with Sweet uh, Frithic, will always have a special place in my heart. As a longtime player, it was incredibly exciting to step behind the prover proverbial proverbial counter so i can't say curtain 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 i did it curtain and be an active creative part of the game myself oh i wanted to say counter for some reason the proverbial mm -hmm. counter um all right this answer can oh no we don't have the spoilers included um i, I put them there oh They're you did update for you. oh shit you're on the live document there than, uh, oh god! Been, oh god! Uh, I, I I was a fool and opened it in the uh, the app that comes with this thing, and it doesn't that's update. The only so. oh. I don't know why they did that. So, I mean, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. it's annoying. Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, I'll, I'll get to it. Hold on. Um, little bit of a little I, bit of a breather. I was here. doing your convenience, and it didn't matter. <laughs> no, it didn't matter. Uh, so guys, tell me, how is your no. favorite local sports team doing this okay, season? Okay, we're back. Okay, you could have at least picked something yeah. related to sports. So why, why, <laughs> why? Yeah, well, well. <laughs> Which sport as well? Yeah. Go Mets! Okay, moving on. In Endwalker, I have no York. stop. Shut up. We don't have time. <laughs> in Endwalker, I happen to be in charge of the beginning of the final days in Thavnir. The scene in Perusa is an especially vivid memory for me when Matsya encourages the terrified crowd to pray. On the one hand, it was a unique challenge to adapt this prayer to a format that us Germans are familiar with, while weaving Thavnir's own principles of faith into it as well. 
I heard that, Mela. It also had to be simple enough <laughs> to be spontaneously recited by uh, an array of different voices without losing any of its emotional impact. On the other hand, I will never forget how much that scene ended up affecting me as I was struggling to find the right words that had to bring hope uh, into a moment of deepest despair. I just find that really interesting thing to say. <laughs> to, to translate it into a way that, like, to be relatable for German players. What do you mean? Well, because it's depicting a foreign culture anyway. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but it's supposed to be localized. Like, it has to make sense. It has to make sense. Context to speaker. It, yeah. It's just really interesting. I, I will say that was probably one of the parts of the of Endwalker that didn't work for me as well. I understood it, but it didn't, like, it didn't get me. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, they, they didn't do their job right. Uh, Odilon says, It's really hard to choose one specific moment. The latter part, part of the 5.3 MSQ really resonated with me, saying goodbye to our friends as you're leaving for a faraway land, not really knowing if or when you'll see them again. Well, it, it, was, it was strange... What? Sorry, what is this sentence? The latter part of the 5.3 MSQ really resonated with me, saying goodbye to our to your friends as you're leaving for a faraway land, not really knowing if or when you'll see them again. Well, it was strangely familiar. Okay, if I had a uh, if I had to choose one quest, okay, Odilon. Uh, if I had to choose one quest, it would be The Journey Continues. The scene with Seto was quite hard to get just right, to convey all the emotions while not overplaying them. I'm very satisfied with the result and the stellar performance by Michel Ram Rambeau. <laughs> oh, yeah. Matthias uh, Kozlovsky. Michel, Michel Ram Rambeau. Michel Rambeau. Rambeau. They, Rambeau? Yeah. They took the text and translated to a whole him. other level. You played Rambo? <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, okay, well, there you go. I mean, look at him, Nikhil. Oh, I am so used to that just being male. I have forgotten who the original person <laughs> was. <laughs> uh, working on the MSQ is generally very rewarding. As a translator, you usually work with written words only, and having such a talented cast uh, play the lines you've translated is always a pleasure to listen to. And when everything is assembled in game, it's quite magical. Hama says, players often highlight the playful puns and references found in the localization. Could you tell us about how you came up with those? Or how you come up with those? Paul says, when inserting linguistically specific humor or memes, we do so bearing in mind a number of rules that ensure we're being respectful to the writer's text, the Final Fantasy XIV world, and our players. For instance, we make a distinction between in-world text, as viewed by characters in the world of XIV, and system text as viewed uh, by the players, as well as the tone and content on en uh, sorry, of any given text in Japanese to make sure that the humor is appropriate and won't cause important information or sentiments to be lost. If a situation is ripe for humor, or at least a groan-inducing pun, the person translating or cross-checking will typically be inspired by the original text or the content itself, and something humorous will come up uh, to mind organically. If we desperately need a clever idea, for instance, when working on a minion with a, a Japanese name that doesn't translate well, we'll toss it out to the rest of the translators for brainstorming. Generally, though, we're not spending all day workshopping jokes. Alas. Liar. <laughs> uh, Pamela says Pretty sure they are <laughs> Pamela says As mentioned before There are many parts in the game Where we are allowed to let our creativity Run fairly free When you decide to, uh, to tackle item text You approach the translation With a certain mindset You just know that you're allowed to write more freely here. As such, we draw on our own humor and pop cultural knowledge, inserting it where it feels natural and funny to us. Not every pun or reference will resonate with everyone, but if you end up smirking at your own, uh, sorry, at your text, there's surely a handful of players out there who share that particular brand of humor and will enjoy that particular quip. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the <clears throat> stupid like quest name puns or the stupid fate puns uh even some of the character names that are just you know like what's he called the half masked man yeah the uh brilliant. yeah yeah they're all great yeah they're good um some of them are so grown worthy i think uh, yeah. it was the breaking so better 
the Breaking Bad one or whatever. Oh, yeah. The fate na- oh, was it Fixing oh, Good? Just, yeah, that's something so like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just like, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> and I, and I, I think, love that. And I think it's fine because it's not actually like in game. That's like it's yeah, essentially okay. system text. So it, it doesn't exist really in game. Mm-hmm. They never go well, overboard with it. It's fine. Yeah. I think the general idea is it's something that your character is thinking as they look at the item. Mm. Mm. My character is unfunny and cringe. They should right. stop. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, Odilon says, I don't believe that puns and humor are specific to the localized version. Quite the contrary. The Japanese text also has its fair share of puns. Humor in general is one of the hardest things to translate. Even if the words are similar, what's funny in one language simply isn't in another. Most of the times, play on words use a language specific. U- sorry, use language specific attributes. For example, in patch 5.2, you get to meet uh, the Kitari tribe in the Raktika Greatwood. In Japanese, those quests all end with Tari, a grammatical tool that is used for enumeration. After trying and failing to find rhymes in Tari in French, I finally named the first quest. Mela. Iki qui sont les Kitari. Thank you. Who, who, who are the Kitari? It fit the theme of the quest. Refuses a part of the word Kitari. Reuses. Sorry. <laughs> reuses a part of the word Kitari. And icing on the cake bears a strange resemblance to a famous cartoon opening in French. Oh, I wonder what it is. Tintin? Who Yeah. It's Tintin, for sure. I hope for this. Um, Final Fantasy XIV is filled with running gags, references to other games in the series, and even other works of pop culture. While we try to stay faithful to the original version, when comedy is involved, our goal is more to convey the intent of the writer to make people, people smile or smirk. And that often means some degree of adaptation. Hama says, what makes the job worthwhile for you? Paul says the obvious answer would be when seeing player reactions to announcements for for new game content or playing through it themselves. But there's a lot of fun to be had throughout the entire localization process. Collaborating with the other languages and the developers to breathe life into the game's world and characters is is an experience I wouldn't trade for anything. Make no mistake, the job can be quite demanding, and even after all these years, I sometimes worry my work doesn't live up to the high standards we set for ourselves. But I have the good fortune of working with an incredibly talented team uh, of people who all push each other to be better. I doubt I would be half the translator that I am uh, had I worked elsewhere. If anyone is interested in joining our localization uh, endeavors, don't hesitate to Wait, send what? us an application. Is that an actual link? <laughs> you can, you can oh, join uh, the... Yeah, it is. Yeah, I yeah. love this page. I've seen it before. Yeah. We've <laughs> yeah. Um, Pamela says, Personally, Final Fantasy XIV uh, has been part of my life for many years now, ever since Beta Phase 2. It has been a motivator when my Japanese studies classes seemed particularly taxing and acts as one of my favorite havens on stressful days to this day. It is also where I forged bonds of long-lasting friendships. As such, I am aware that this game is more than just an MMORPG for a lot of people, me included. Being able to intertwine my love for creative writing with my passion for Final Fantasy XIV still seems surreal sometimes. Even after three and a half years. Then there are the players, of course, our most uh, most prominent source of motivation. When I see everyone engaging with the story and its characters, sharing their thoughts and excitedly expressing their anticipation for upcoming patches and expansions firsthand, nothing warms the heart quite as much as knowing that your work contributes to that kind of joy and passion. By the way, we are looking for reinforcements for our translation Uh, team. If you feel like you may be interested, do feel free to send us your application. Okay. Yeah. Paul and Pamela. Uh, Odilon says, before working on Final Fantasy XIV, I did a lot of technical and legal translation, um, where th- there is little to no feedback concerning your work. But when working on games, thanks to the popularity of streaming, we can get live feedback from our players. It's always incredibly gratifying to see people laugh or just react while playing the game. You get the satisfaction of having chosen the right words to deliver what the writer wanted to convey in the first place, erasing the boundary of a foreign language. One more thing that is very specific to 14 is teamwork and the feeling of camaraderie it conveys. People usually imagine translations being done by a lone worker tackling mountains of text, but given the scope of 14, communication is paramount. As I explained before, within our own team, as we spend a lot of as we spend a good amount of time checking each other's work, but also with our colleagues from the English and German teams. We also exchange a lot of our 
lot with our QA team, the project management team, and of course, the developers. All in all, working on Final Fantasy XIV involves a lot more discussion than people may think. Which, by the way, if you've read this article all the way to this point and feel like you'd like to join us, we are still recruiting <laughs> Japanese to French translators. As the world of XIV is expanding, so does our team so does our team need reinforcements? If you'd like to apply, please follow, and then there's a link. Hama says, last but not least, please tell us what you're looking forward to in the future or would like to convey to our Warriors of Light. Paul says, to both our green-leafed sprouts and veteran players, thank you so much for joining us on this Final Fantasy journey. The love and support of the Final Fantasy XIV community has shown... Uh, sorry, the love and support the 14 community has shown us is more than we could have ever hoped for. I've had the honor and privilege of working with this team for nearly 10 years now, and I very much look forward to another 10. Pamela says, what would Final Fantasy 14 be without the passion and creativity of the players? They inspire and motivate us every single day and are, after all, what makes this game really special. For this, a big thank you to all of you, both professionally and personally speaking. Those of you who play the game in other languages, I'd like to encourage you to give the German <laughs> version a try as well. Maybe we'll manage to positively surprise you after all. I've already done that, Pamela. It was quite funny. What? Okay. Yeah. I mean, see, they worked hard, you know? You should take a peek. No, I, I, I agree. It's just an... It's just an interesting request. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, fine. I mean, it changes I'll, the game I, a little. It's kind of yeah, it does. That'd yeah. be great. Yeah, but sure. Uh, <laughs> sure. I'm joining the team though as a Spanish translator officially, uh, but I will only translate it into Dominican Spanish. Uh, so it's going to be like Conyo, a guerrero de luz. Mira, donde, donde cae. That's going to sound like that. So uh, look forward to it. All, All right. right. Uh, I'll won't be trying that one out. All yeah. right. <laughs> Do you have to reset the game when you change uh, language packs. Think so? I think you get booted to the. I've never menu. changed the audio. I don't re remember. Um, I don't even remember where you do it. But I think no. you. I think from when I did it, you were booted out. I also remember okay. doing. Who oh, were you booted out? Maybe that's if you. I'm literally going to no change idea. the language, like the actual. I've never changed language. language in my life. No, me neither. You can change. I think it, wow. If you change the voice, it it just switches, you, but not the oh, not the, the text. Oh. Oh no! I wanted to do voice, so that's so weird. Okay. All right, Odilon's the last. Maybe I'll try it for you, Pamela. Last part from Aurelon here. Thanks for reading all the way here. I hope that your travels through Eorzea and beyond have been as pleasant as they were for us writing them. The passion that radiates from the 14 community is a big source for, of motivation for us and pushes us to give our all and offer you the best experience possible. I'd like to encourage you to try the French dub as well and its formidable oh, okay. cast of talented actors. Try it. You'll love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. I can't do both. No, <laughs> German. German it is then. Do no, do German text and then French audio. Oh my ah, god! Oh my god! That's gonna confuse my brain so much. <laughs> yeah, that is. That would be horrendous. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'd like. Um, I've said this before, but for those that are privileged enough to have it translated in their language, I if we if. If there was a Nordic translation department and say Norwegian was one of them, I would never play it in Norwegian. I detest <laughs> Norwegian in everything. When we were setting up, um, so we were playing we we're playing Monkey Island on Wednesdays, and th there was a lot of problems running Monkey Island Four. One of the uh, tips to make it run was to download Scum uh, VM uh, or whatever it's called, and it recognized that I was in Norway and the whole interface was then in Norwegian. And I spent like half an hour not even trying to get Monkey Island 4 to run. I was looking for the language settings. <laughs> I couldn't find them, so I uninstalled it and gave up. I couldn't deal with the so with the sh with anything in Norwegian. I don't even know how system settings work in Norwegian. I don't even know what they mean. Like I was reading Norwegian, like well, what is that? What we call it? Like what the fuck is this? I hate it. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, let's be honest. Most if most countries, things are just in English. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's it just kind of sucks, but that's yeah. how you learn stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you'll be like, oh yeah, this is the menu button in English. Just hit the menu. <laughs> 
I would if love was, if it was Nordic. I'd be like, I'd have the Danish dub, but the Finnish text. That would be great. <laughs> I'd sit there and laugh. Oh, that'd be great. What an experience that would be. Anyways, um, that's the uh, interview. Uh, that was co- the thing I liked most about that was they picked someone from each major languages translation team. So you mm-hmm. got like an actual mm-hmm. rounded picture of oh. the, the job rather than just yeah yes what it is mm-hmm. it's uh, we don't Pretty again cool I, I like interviews that look at people in the team that we don't hear much from and here is another one so yeah yeah it's really nice it's good to see all the cogs yeah that like go the, into the machine yeah like they would never be at a fan fest as no. much as i think that would be cool well not even a fan fest q a <laughs> that would have been a no. dry panel uh, i don't think that would translate mm. well to a panel i don't know um, well, I mean, Koji Fox kind of made it work because he's a bit of a like uh, eccentric character. character yeah, um, but yeah, I think it would be difficult <laughs> to do that during fun. Remember, they tried to give us the battle director uh, panel once, and that um, didn't uh-huh. work. <laughs> oh, it's, some of them have worked, some of them have not worked. Yeah, been a bit the, hit and miss. The, the gear design one was very interesting. Right. Yes, yes. She was yes. cool. She was good. Yeah. But she did mm-hmm. say, was she the one that said that Europe was more into fashion? I don't remember when they said that. No, that was she, didn't, a... she didn't say that. Oh, okay. Other people said that, but yeah. she, that was why she was chosen for the European fans. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, well there you go. That is uh, that's it for today, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week, same time, same place. Remember to follow on Twitter at SpeakersXV, twitchtv and youtubecom SpeakersXV, exclamation Discord and chat if you want to join our Discord server. If you watch on demand, links in the description. Uh, remember to send us mog mail, slash mog mail. And if you're watching live, we will be going into the post show, so make sure you catch that as well. Uh, yeah, that's it. Take care. Uh, see you later. Bye. Adiós. Bye.